entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs as they as it is this is a show for you imagine this a group of Indians and I'm calling them that because they are from India have been honoring their own for the last five years two years ago they decided let's bridge the gap let's go to Africa and see the similarities see what we can do in Africa so last year they held an event a competition called the Sun Cup Forum Sun Cup Africa Awards and they awarded the first winners this year again they decided to come back this afternoon a winner was announced we'll tell you about him in a little while but first why us why Kenya why not why Africa well the group is called IntelliCap. Chairman of the group is a man by the name of Vinit Rai. He's been there. He started this company about 12 years ago. He made a lot of money for a lot of people. With him, young lady in the middle, Nisha Dutt. She's the executive director of IntelliCap. Folks, oh, by the way, Twitter handles. Let me give them to you right away. At Krenanga Jeff, of course. At Rai Vinit. At Sankalp Forum. You can use the hashtag S. F Africa. If not, just use JKL and we'll get the point. We have a live audience today, so if we hear some laughing, well, it's going to be a funny show. Nisha, Nisha good to see you. Good to see You're you. nervous, aren't you? Not really. We need. It's incredible. I mean, and I said a group of Indians because, you know, Kenyans, we're used to Indians, have been here for the last 120 years. So when you say Indians, they think it's Kenyan Indians. But you guys from across the, 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 the river, the river, the lake, the ocean, <laughs> You decided to come to Africa. Why? Well, I think uh, it all started in 2008. Uh, a colleague of mine and I came here to do a small conference, <coughs> probably right in hotel, uh, right here in Nairobi. And when we did that conference, I actually realized that uh, there's something here that probably should bring us back. Uh, the challenge was India is a large country and we have enough problems of our own. So why should we come to Africa? And uh, took us some time, took us some time to establish what we were doing. And uh, then we looked at Africa and the problem with Indians is they look at Africa as one single country. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment we started understanding a little bit of Africa, we realized it's not one country, it's a continent, very large one at that. And being simpletons, we just divided Africa in four parts, north, south, east, west. And East looks the right way to go. <laughs> so if you're in I'm case. glad you said that. Nisha, were you guys surprised at what you've seen here in this part? We were, in, a, in fact, because we were expecting to get some response, but the response that we have received is absolutely overwhelming. Mm. And the quality of entrepreneurship is extremely high. I would actually even rate it higher than India in some sense. Come on. Yes, I would. Seriously? Yes. I think, you know, the ideas that we have heard, the quality, um, the interest, the energy, everything is extremely high here. And, and that, you were telling me earlier on, uh, Vineet, it, that bridge that you're trying to build across from India to Africa, the infrastructure you're building, is this the whole purpose? I think, I think that it started with what we did in India itself. So, as I said, uh, we started in Telecab with the thinking that uh, how do you make young people deal with the most difficult problems? And when we started looking at the problem, the problem was how do you look at the base of the pyramid, the people who are really excluded, how do you bring them into the mainstream? And we wanted to use business principles to do that. Very quickly we realized that uh, just doing one thing, giving money or solving one problem is not going to make a difference. You need to build a highway, a road which has all kinds of solutions there to take a person from point A to point B, which is essentially from an idea to a stage where he is making a difference. Now we have done it for the last 12 years in India. We believe we have learned a lot about India and there is something that we can do in other part of the world. Mm -hmm. As I said, East Africa is what we chose to come. Kenya and Nairobi is where we have been. And uh, what we are trying to see is can we build a road here? Now of course there are questions. Do you know Africa? Do you understand anything about, about Africa? And my answer is very simple. There are enough Africans you know about Africa. <laughs> So the Indians need not know about Africa. What we need to know is how do you build a road. Finally the road is going to be built by the people here, not by us. So we have some tools, some technologies, some thought process. Some of it will be useful, some will not work. But then we will collaboratively decide with people here what to build. And at some point of time the road would be built and it will actually create the value which is essentially bringing the excluded communities inside. Make people who are not really struggling to be part of I mean, this is a very young continent. This is a very young country on top of that. I just came to know how young this country is. Yeah. 
If that kind of aspiration you can convert into reality, then none of us are going to be a poor country anymore. Absolutely. And that's what we are trying to do. Nisha, are you surprised? I mean, the second year that this competition is running, you have more than 300 entries from 16 countries. Were you, were you guys pleasantly surprised? Very pleasantly surprised. <clears throat> we were expecting a positive response, but like I said, this has been like outstanding. And we are only hoping that it will go bigger and bigger. Because in India, we have been able to grow it to a sizable, you know, uh, conference. We are hoping that this becomes bigger as yeah. well as it moves yeah. forward. Vineet, people are probably wondering right now, how do people apply? How do people qualify for this award? I think, uh, ultimately, if the three things that we are looking for is we are looking for a man with an idea. Oh, or a woman. Uh, <laughs> child we are excluding for the time being. So a man or a woman uh, with an idea that actually has a transformative power. So essentially an idea that has a business thought process, but essentially bringing and or serving or creating value for those who probably are not part of the value chain right now, the way we see it. Once we get these ideas, we first try to screen them. Uh, this year, as we heard, some 300 people applied from across 20 countries. Uh, we bring them down to some 30 ideas and then we bring them down to 10 ideas. Essentially what the role is not to actually screen people and tell them their ideas are not good. The job that we have is how do you make those ideas so high quality that people with capital can actually invest in them. Mm. And that's essentially what we are bringing. So this is not a competition per se for finding the best guy. This is a competition to actually make sure that people take their ideas forward. And that's basically the victory of it. So winning an award is important, but essentially moving forward is what we are Yeah, doing. I'm glad you said that because last year's runner-up, Dr. Mocha Lantern from Cameroon, was the runner-up. But he has gone on to bigger and better things, so it's not necessarily the winner who goes Absolutely. on to bigger things, right? right? Exactly right, because I think it's about building a viable business at the end of the day. And even if you are not a winner, you do get a lot of support in terms of, you know, how do you flesh out an idea better? Uh, how do you pitch to investors? How do you think about your business? Yeah. So I think that itself is very valuable for entrepreneurs to sort of, you know, set them out on their journey. So even if you are not a winner, I think it sort of puts you in the mindset of how do you attract commercial capital. Yeah. And that itself is a big value add, I think. Absolutely. Okay, so this year and last year as well, you have like three main winners, right? Second runner-up, first runner-up, and then winner. What happens to them after this? What's the process? So, you see, uh, last year what we did is we did a few things, then we take the person back to India where we actually do the global summit where a fairly large number of new sets of investors come. I think we also realize that it's not only the investors that are important. Finally, you are actually building a business. You are looking for all kinds of collaborations. So there were people from here who were looking for somebody who can actually repackage a machine or make a cheaper machine for them, which was things that we discovered as people started interacting on their own. So while we brought in a certain network, we realized the entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs and they were able to go beyond the networks we offered. Is it what we, we know as angel funds? Is that what they're looking for? So there's a whole set of people. So angels are actually a group of people who may want to invest their capital and mentor. But then there are impact funds which are actually looking for an idea that can make an impact and are willing to take extraordinary risks. There is development finance capital which includes the IFC, the FMO, the KFW, the OPEC. It's all there at Sankal. They all are looking for the next big idea that could trans will have transformed. They are looking for the next safari.com. Uh, this is what they are actually looking for. And if you can find that, you can make a difference. And essentially, we are trying to bring everybody who's there from the angel to the impact to the mainstream fund and to the DFIs, who yeah. all have a role to play in taking this forward. Sure. Nisha, I was at the function this afternoon and it was literally it was standing room only. Five, six hundred people in the room and everybody stayed till the very end. Yes. What does this mean? I think that means that we are able to bring something which is uh, new, it's exciting, and people see value in it because um, it's just grown, right? I mean, last year we had about 300 or 400 people and this year we had 600 and a lot of people stayed till the very end and the feedback has been really excellent. They feel that they have been able to forge networks, they are getting the exposure that they need and uh, that and that's been the purpose, you know, of us coming here. So somewhere it's it's sort of, you know, it validates everything that we have been doing. So mm -hmm. it's been great. Vineet, let's face it, you're spending a million dollars to come to Africa to try and look for the next big thing. Is it worth it? Well, a million dollars is actually, it's not coming from my pockets. What we are trying to do is putting in a huge amount of labor to collect those who want to make this happen. 
and we are basically the tools in the hand of those who have the capital. So why is it worth it is actually an important question and as I said initially people said don't you have problems in India that you are coming running to Africa. I don't think so it's a problem of India alone. Finally the world is shrinking today, technology has brought things together. Uh, most of us are becoming global citizens, all of us travel extensively. The challenges of Africa does not leave India untouched. Similarly, opportunities in India does not leave Africa untouched. I think when I com I'm coming from India to Africa, I'm not coming here to give, I'm actually coming here to take a lot as well. And I think there are areas where Africa is way advanced than what we have. And there are areas where we are better off. But basically the South-South collaboration that we have been talking about is people like you in Africa and people like us in India need to work with each other rather than keep looking at the West and trying to get things from there. Absolutely, because we have a common language. We all speak, you know, all British, former British colonies, aren't we? Yeah. Right. A similarity. Okay, for the first time speaking of the British, DFID has thrown in a huge chunk of money, right? 10,000 pounds for one of the winners. Were you surprised? No, I mean uh, DFID has been a, a very core supporter of Sankalp and of Intelica for a long time and they do this women and uh, girls award even in Sankalp India every year so it's not a surprise but um, it's definitely a very positive move I think um, it's needed it's much needed to bring recognition to women entrepreneurs yeah and, and with all the other folks who are jumping on the bandwagon this year uh, Vineet what are you going to tell them I know you're going to talk to them tomorrow what are you going to tell all these folks who want to be a part of Sankalp and the bigger picture well, I think um, I think Sankal per se is less important. What is important is the question about why are we here in Africa. So my big question to all the development finance institutions and other institutions that we have galvanized and brought them here is why are you here in Africa? What have you done in the past? And how the future looks different? Uh, more so as I'm learning and the more I'm learning about the youthfulness of this country or the, and the continent itself, the question probably is the tools that have been used in the past probably are not the right tools for the future. And is that realization sinking in to those who have been in Africa for much longer than I have been? Mm -hmm. And that's the question. So I'm taking a very naive position and asking them very naive questions tomorrow. Good, good. Ask them. Don't fear. <laughs> Nisha, <laughs> at the end of the day, is it worth it? Absolutely. I think a lot of us, at least at Intelica, um, we left, uh, you know, very lucrative mainstream careers behind to do what we do. and. For us, you know, I think, uh, and I speak for everyone here, I think it's worth every cent. It's worth it. And, you know, events like this, when we see such huge, overwhelming, positive response, it just validates, you know, everything that we have been doing and it totally it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Vineet, can you sustain this for the next 10 years? Because, okay, you start off with a bang, it's building, this is year two. Can you last 10 years? Well, Jeff, uh, if anybody has known us, we always pick the most difficult war, but we keep fighting the war for, for a long time. So if you look at Sankalp in India, which started, actually we started with a whimper always. So even last year, while it looked great, but if I compare it what we have been doing in India for seven years mm. now and seventh years this year, uh, I don't believe that things go up and down in case you have ability to offer value, which is consistent and sustainable. And what you are looking about is a group of people who believe in sustainability. So we are not going to do anything that is a hype and then can fade away. We stand for something which is sustainable and long term. Otherwise, we wouldn't have come here. The West Africans have been screaming and yelling and kicking and saying, come and see us, come and work with us. Are you going to do that? We have been working with West Africans. Um, it's not like we haven't been working with them, J not just in this format. It's just that we haven't been working with them in the Sankal format. We have done projects there. We actively work in that part of the world. Um, but for us at Intelica, we have to take, you know, phased approach because we also have limited resources and we have to be cognizant of our bandwidth. So for us, East Africa it is and we really want to make sure that we make it work here and we make it work very well mm -hmm. before we make the leap to West Africa. So for us, it's important that we make a difference first Absolutely. where we are. Vineet, a lot of people are probably wondering now, how do we get involved? How do we apply? How do we get more information? Give them the website, give them the information. Well, uh, if any of you want to know more about IntelliCap, it's www.intellicap.com. If you want to know about Sankal Forum, it is www.sankalforum.com. Uh, there are a lot of sites that you will hear and write about us. You can Google Nishada that. Go, just Google Nishada if you want to know. <laughs> I'm wondering why, but yeah. okay, please Google. <laughs> can we Google you? I don't know what you'll find, but yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Might be interesting. Right? <laughs> Who knows? Next year, same thing, same time? 
How, when can people start applying for the next one? Yeah, well, I think the right person is Kanika Kumar, but uh, who is actually the one who has organized this and who is really our leader here. Uh, but uh, I think the application starts somewhere between September and October. Uh, no, and oh, I think I application starts at in June. You know this? Yes, I Better. know this. You just overrule the chairman, you know that? Because I'm more plugged in. <laughs> wow. They do this in India. <laughs> okay. So June they start applying. Yeah. And, and you're setting up a company here, aren't you? Yeah, we basically are in the final stages of launching in Telecap Africa in Kenya itself, in Nairobi. And uh, hopefully you will see a large number of us right here. I can overrule you, you know. Oh. <laughs> we should do that. Thank you. Pleasure. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. We're going to take a break. Come back and uh, meet 2015 Sankal Africa Award winner. It was announced just a few short hours ago. And also, last year's runner-up. He's all the way from Cameroon. Let's see where he is now and where Sankal has taken him. Later on, a very young Chandaria. That's right. He's 29 years old. He's just been made... Group CEO of Chindaria something or other. Goodness gracious me, these kids. You're going to want to listen to what he thinks about entrepreneurs in Kenya and Africa. Hashtags at Rai Vineet, at Kwenanga Jeff, at Sankal Forum. Use the hashtag SFAfrica. Jeff Kwenanga live at the Intercontinental Hotel takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.